Okay. Hi guys, Tempest here. And I thought I would show you a little upgrade that you can do to your OSR2. So a quick video. This is an as-built OSR2. And you see what we have inside here. We have power supply, we have our servos. This is exactly how I showed you how to put it together. And if I take the servo leads out, you'll see we have two servo leads. And the power supply comes straight from this power supply here to these blocks. And what the blocks actually do is they power these ring, these um, pins here. I'll just get a screwdriver. So if you look closely, this one here, this red one, this red one, those are powered from here. These black ones are all connected to ground. But there are a couple of problems with this. So the first one is a little niggle, which is that for some reason a little bit of the USB power goes into the servos, which means you can never turn the servos off completely, which is a bit annoying. I assume it's because they assume you're going to be using small hobby type servos. Um, and it might be useful just to power those off USB, which is no good for us because we're using these big powerful ones. And the other problem is um, there are some of you who want to use quite powerful servos here that are going to draw a lot of current and you want to get a lot of powerful use out of them. And the problem with that is the power has to come from this lead here through this block and then it has to run through tracks in the Romeo itself to these pin rails. And the problem with that is that those tracks aren't particularly large. And that means if you put a lot of power through them, they're going to heat up and you might end up burning them out. So I've got a modification that you can do to the OSR2 that will solve both of these problems. I call it the power user upgrade or the, the external power bus. So let me show you what that looks like. So here we go, this is what I have made, and I'll show you how to install it, but first let's show you what it is. So most of you probably aren't used to doing much soldering or building stuff, which is absolutely fine. And that's why I put the OSR2 together without needing any of that. But if you want to have a dabble in, in making something, I think this is a good place to start because there's not much you can do to go wrong here. And it would be a bit of, and it would be a bit of a confidence booster, so to speak. So let me show you what we've got here. So the first thing is you could just use that power supply to do this but what I've done because I want to use these thick jumper cables I've actually bought a female barrel jack and I've soldered these jumper wires so these are normal jumper wires they're rated to about four amps continuous current I think so you can pretty much easily pick those pick these up and I've connected the positive to a switch so this is a normal toggle switch again pretty easy to get hold of and those of you who are observant will have noticed that there is a little hole here in the OSR2 believe it or not I think more than a few days in advance and finally we come to this so what have I got on here well this is a couple of pin rails so you've got some positive pins and some ground pins and if I look on the back here, don't spare the solder, you just solder all the way across. Now what's this made out of? This is copper strip board. You can buy it in pretty much any electronic supplier. And literally what I've done is I've taken a saw to it and I've cut out a two strip section of it of the right length. And then what I've soldered into it are some lengths of these, which are 0.1 inch header pins. Again, pretty easy to get hold of. And you can literally just 
count how many you want and then break it off. So, and what you'll see here is I've, again, I'm thinking ahead, one day we're going to be adding more servos maybe. I, I've put six, so enough power for six servos. And I've got positive goes from the power supply of the female jack to a switch from the middle one to one of the sides. So you'll be able to switch that on or off. Then that goes to here, which is a pin rail. And then on here, I've got ground, which goes to this. And there's also a lead that sticks out, and I'll show you what that's for. One last thing with this, for most power supplies, the middle is the positive, the outside is the earth. I've already had one of my patrons blow up a Romeo by buying a power supply that does it the other way around. So the best thing you can do, if you're not sure, is get a multimeter on it. One of these things, check the power, check which one is positive. So yeah, I'm going to install this into the OSR2 and then I will show you how it works. Okay, so you can see here, power supply goes, the female barrel jack goes where it was, but this is the new one. Connects over to this switch on here. So you can switch the servos on and off. And then what we have in the middle here is these pins. Now, this extra wire here, just see if you can see it. Yes, this extra earth thing here. What we're going to do is we're still going to be plugging the servos in here. So to complete that circuit, we also need to connect from this ground lead and these ground pins to the Romeo. That's an important thing, otherwise nothing's gonna work. So we've connected, we've grounded to the Romeo, and then we've got ground to here. Power comes in here, comes to here, but it doesn't need to go to the Romeo. Next, we're going to look at this. So how do I plug these in, the power and the ground? How do I plug those in without plugging in here. Well, what you can do, take your modelling knife or a screwdriver or something, you can actually go into here and not stab yourself in the finger. So that comes out. So you can connect that wherever you want to. So I will connect this up here. Make sure you get the red to red, black to black. That's plugged in there. And this is the left servo. So the left servo will plug in to channel number two. This one number two. Now, you can just plug those in as bare metal, although there's a risk of that because the two servos might end up touching each other. So with this end, you've got a couple of choices. One of them is, this is black electrical tape. You can pull it out, wrap it around, and that will uh, prevent it from shorting on anything else. What I'm doing, you can actually buy these. These are, uh, not sure what you'd call them, like pin protectors, maybe jumper wire covers or something like that. But this is basically a one pin version of what you get on the end of a servo. So I'm going to pop that on there. Like that. And we do the same with this one. Helps if you push the pin inwards. Get under that little hook. And 
and then you can pull the pin out. As I say, don't feel you have to get these, you can just put a bit of tape around it. So the tape will do the job. Sticky tape. That's plugged in there. And these plug in here. So the last thing I would say is if your servos have metal bases, you want to be sure that this doesn't end up fouling. These are plastic based servo, servos, so I'm less worried. But you don't want these pins to come into contact with anything metal. So again, tape is your friend. You can wrap it around just to make sure everything's insulated. But yeah. And that means you can close everything up. And now you can power this thing up. And the only difference you see on the outside is you've got this switch here to switch the servos on and off. And the Arduino will stay on. But if you ever need to cut power to the servos, you can do it that way. So that's a power user mod for the OSR2. I hope that was useful for you.